Awesome. Uh, so we're here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Excited to be here today. It's been, wow, it's been about two and a half years since I've done one of these uh, YouTube lives. So really, really happy to be here and really excited to get a chance to share with you in a different format something that might add some value to your life. Uh, today's topic is um, something that's dear to my heart because I see so many women suffering from really bad dates and bad experiences and, 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 and just bad moments. And I just don't want you to go through, through more of those. So, so the topic for today is the 10 smart principles to fewer dates but better men. So, you know, it's one of those things where if you think about it, if you can get the 10 minute apps, then why would you go for the six hour apps, right? It's same thing. If, if you can go, if you can find an, a worthy, awesome relationship with fewer dates, then why would you have to go on lots and lots of dates that don't, uh, they're not meaningful to you? So with that said, I, I want to start today by reading something. It's an invitation, an invitation of sorts for, for you to go deeper and get outside of your comfort zone and to be able to transcend the limitations maybe of your current conditioning, of your current day. And, and remember that the only way for you to get and experience the love that's really the, yours for the taking is to take risks. And I'm talking about smart risks, not silly risks, but still risks are something that makes you feel antsy and anxious and and, and challenged. So the, to the poem that I'm about to read right now is something called Just Beyond Yourself. And uh, here it goes. Let me know what you think about it in a second here. You can start uh, at a comment here if you want to let me know. As I'm reading this, uh, a couple of things. One, your name. Two, where you're connecting from. So if you want to share that uh, on the comments as I'm reading this, that I welcome. And here it goes. It says, just be on yourself. And it says, just be on yourself is where you need to be. Half a step into self-forgetting and the rest restored by what, by what you'll meet. There is a ro road always beckoning. When you see the two sides of it, closing together at that far horizon and deep in the foundations of your own heart at exactly the same time, that's how you know it's the road you have to follow. That's how you know it's where you have to go. That's how you know you have to go. That's how you know just beyond yourself is where you need to be. <laughs> so uh, there you have it. Uh, an invitation as we embark on this series of live uh, broadcasts and see where it goes from here. Okay. Uh, so Roller Girl, uh, hello from Las Vegas. Awesome. <laughs> uh, hello to Las Vegas. Uh, Crystal, uh, hello from Seattle. Good morning from Toronto. Uh, awesome. Canada. Love Canada. Here's here's I'm gonna start I'm gonna start right now. Uh, I'm gonna dive deep into this because I want to make sure that you get as much out of it. I'm not sure how long you're gonna stay here, uh, but I want to make sure you get as much out of this as you can. So let's do this. For those of you who are watching live, and for those of you who are also watching on the replay, because this will be still in my channel for people to watch after we end. I would love for you if you haven't done this already and you really want to figure out a way to connect with more conscious men, if you want to go beyond the topics of conversation that we can have in this, even though this is a longer video than my usual videos, uh, if you want to go deeper in a very specific way, uh, and you want to go through my training on how you can start attracting conscious men, then I'm going to ask you to, uh, parallel to watching me right now, open up a browser and, and go to this website. And the website that I want you to go to is mydatingcure.com. So triple W mydatingcure.com. If you go to that website, you will be able to just enter your name and email and start watching a free training that I created for you that's going to help you to go beyond your comfort zone, to connect with more conscious men, to recognize what maybe what are some of the blind spots that you're not seeing that are making this hard for you. Okay, so just go to that website when you get a chance, uh, enter them an email, and then you'll get an email with a training so you can start watching that after after this or at some point today. Let's get started. So, okay. So relationship, I, I want to start my, my, my first point. I'm talking about principles. I, I don't like to talk about rules sometimes because rules seem constricting and seem like I don't want to follow rules. Most people have this feeling of if it's a rule, maybe it's not worth following. So I want to talk about uh, principles that can help you realistically to go on fewer dates, 
have and get better men. And and when I say fewer dates, maybe some of you find dating a lot of fun. Some of you don't. But I'm not talking about the process concept of dating as it being something wrong. I'm talking about how can you shorten the time span between getting what you want, um, between where you are right now and getting what you want, which is an amazing relationship. And the first principle that I want to share with you, uh, for those of you, especially if you've been out of a relationship for a while, and I think if you if you if you if you're coming from an angle where you're thinking, you know what? A relationship is going to change it all for me. A relationship is going to make my life so much better. I'm not saying that it's not, but you have to start from a strong foundation, a strong place. So the first principle, if you want to write it down, is a relationship magnifies what is. A a, a relationship is a mirror that's going to magnify what is. So if your life is sucky, your relationship will magnify how sucky your life is. If your life is fulfilling, then a relationship will magnify the fulfillment in your own life. And why is it important to talk about this first before I talk about the specifics and the logistics of how you connect with better men and how you cut down the time of finding your ideal soulmate? Why? Because the mindset around attracting your ideal life partner is 90% of the of the game and 10% is going to be the mechanics and the logistics of how you pull it off. And the mindset behind this is if my life right now is feeling mediocre, if it's feeling unfulfilled, if it's feeling down, if it's feeling like, oh, I'm just looking for someone to come save me. Not that you would say that to yourself in those many words, but that's the general feeling. Life is sucky. When he comes around, it'll be better in a good way. Then it's an invitation for you to stop for a while and pause because the relationship that comes and emerges from a place of lack is going to be a relationship that typically isn't the best relationship for you, a relationship that creates a sort of codependence because you're almost using him as your oxygen because you don't have enough of it. So when he comes around, yeah, it feels great at the start, but then you depend on him to create this aliveness. So there's a fine balance and that's a place where we're navigating right now. It's a nuanced thing, which is you need to be hungry to go for something more than what you have right now. But you also have to be willing to create something fulfilling right now so that you emerge into this relationship from a place of my, my cup is full and adding another cup will be even better versus I call it the principle of 1 plus 1 equals 10. 0.5, which is half a person, plus 0.5 equals not enough. It's never enough when you're bringing only half of your game to the thing. So just think about what that means and think about right now. You could be in a situation where you say, my life is pretty awesome. The only thing it's lacking is a relationship. Or you can be saying to yourself right now, my finances kind of suck. My relationships with my children suck. My relationships with my friends suck. Uh, I don't really like my job and I want a relationship. That, my, my, my dear, is not the best place to step into a relationship. And it doesn't mean that you have to wait years to change that, but there's a deep invitation to figure out where are you emerging from and how are you stepping into that relationship. Let me see, I have a few more comments here. Um, Great, how are you doing Taylor? How are you doing Elise (laughs) Uh, from California? And Annie from Buffalo, New York, sitting near Niagara Falls, I love it. Okay, so here we go. Second principle, Uh, second principle says this, I am responsible for my own fulfillment. So what does that mean? Okay, that means that it's playing on the previous one. Playing on the previous one is what are the things that make you feel fulfilled in life? What are the things that make you feel happy? What are the things that make you feel connected? What are the things that make you feel uh, flexible? What are the things that make you feel meaning? And are you right now in hopes of avoiding your responsibility for doing those things, just hope waiting for a relationship to fulfill those? And if the answer is yes, then again, there's an invitation right now for you to build your own fulfillment. Uh, Not to the point where you feel, you know what, I don't need anything else because the reality for most of us is that, as I shared, one plus one equals 10. So if you have a fulfilled life and you connect with another human being who's whole and complete and has his own fulfilled life, then something really magic can emerge because you're you're coming at it not from a place of, you're coming from a place of real human need, which is the need to connect and find love, but not from a place of neediness. Need and neediness are two different things. And you want to avoid neediness. You want to come from a place of honesty and vulnerability and need. Because to say to yourself, I don't need anyone in my life, I think for, for most of us, that's BS. That's not true. But to also come from it, uh, to enter the place of relationship from a place of true lack, or from a place of sadness and sorrow, it's it's not a good invitation. So that's the second principle, is I am responsible for my own fulfillment. 
Uh, I'm going to show a third principle, which is <laughs> 2% is all you need. Get over it. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit at length because I find that the failure to understand this principle, that 2% is all you need and you need to get over it and really get with a program on that one, is that if you don't see it that way, you're going to suffer needlessly. I'm going to give you an analogy. Imagine that you're someone who enjoys the water, who enjoys the ocean, who enjoys rivers and lakes. And you have this hypothesis that you can, for whatever reason, do the jumping into the ocean without getting wet. Well, I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but I, 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 it's pretty pretty just consistent with the loss, loss of nature that if you jump into the ocean, you, you will get wet. So why am I sharing this? Because the truth is, and if you want to get nothing else out of this podcast, <laughs> out of this live, but this gem of info, I think it can change your life, which is the vast majority of men out there, I'm going to say 97, 98% of men out there are not a fit for what you want, not a fit for your lifestyle, not a fit for your goals, not a fit for your dreams, not a fit for the type of relationship you're seeking. And I'm not saying this, this doesn't mean that 97% or 98% of men are, are, are the wrong, I mean, are just bad guys or, or not worthy human beings. It just means that some of them are not meant to be in relationships. Some of them are immature. Some of them are only looking for sex. Some of them are looking for something easy. So that's 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 a bulk of them. But there's other ones who are great guys who want something different than you want, who are looking for a different kind of relationship, who are looking for a different kind of dynamic, a different kind of depth, a different kind of connection. And if you go at it thinking, I'm going to jump in the waters without getting wet, then you're going to suffer. That means that if you go out there, whether it's organically connecting with men or connecting with guys online, hoping to get a 50-50 split of amazing, conscious, hard open uh, thrilling men and 50% of guys who are not what you want, uh, by the time you connect with a few, you're going to think the split is off, that's something wrong and that you should stop doing and that it doesn't work. And what I'm here to say is this. Think about it in terms of what you really want out of a relationship. Think about in terms of what a relationship really means and represents to you. Because I think for most of the people that I've connected with throughout the time, without whether they have the ability to express this in words or not, it's some it's somewhat true for them. And if you're watching my videos, when there's so many other human beings who display different kinds of information, and I have a very particular way of explaining things and a particular vision, a particular flavor of how I connect with uh, psychology and with love and with even my own philosophy around life, then my hypothesis is you want so much more than what you've gotten. You want so much more than what your previous human beings in your lineage have gotten. So that means that if you think about this, maybe you think about your mom and ask yourself, do I want the kind of love that my mom got? Or do I want something better and deeper, more profound, more respectful, more connected, more spiritual? If the answer is yes to any of those, then you want more, right? Now take it to one more generation before your mom. Think about your grandma. I mean, I can talk about my own grandmas, both of them, and say that they experienced some level of love, but definitely a lot less than what I think they deserved, a lot different from what I think they should have gotten. So, and if, I mean, I don't even dare go one more generation. I mean, my great grandmas, I mean, that that's probably was a very, very painful situation compared to what my mom, for example, experienced. <laughs> so when I think about think about your own lineage, think about the type of relationship and connection that you're seeking right now. It's it's never happened in human history. That's the reality of things. For for the majority of, of us, we don't have a gigantic example of possibility from people before us. We have some examples of things we might like, but typically we're seeking more. Why? Because you don't need a guy for income anymore. You don't need a guy to to take you around town. You don't need a guy to drive you. You don't need a guy to order stuff for you. You can do all those things yourself, which is great. Progress has been made. Women have more rights. Women have the ability and capacity to do more in this day and age that at any point in human history, we have not gone far enough. That's true. But there's, there's, there's definitely more now than at any point in human history, especially in the Western world. So having said that, um, because you're seeking something really, really profound, something that throughout thousands and thousands of years of human history uh, hasn't really happened. The, uh, you, you have to develop certain skills, number one, but two, you, you, what you're seeking is something pretty strong and pretty powerful, and I think it merits not experiencing it just right off the bat. 
it's something worth developing it's something worth i mean fighting for in some way so if the type of relationship you're seeking which is amazing isn't achievable with 98 percent of the human of humans out there what's wrong with that i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think that that the challenge that we're experiencing right now is in some ways commensurate with the type of relationship we're seeking. But sometimes we feel that because other people are in relationships and they seemingly didn't struggle too, too hard to get into them, even though we don't know what happens behind uh, closed doors, even though we think they have an amazing relationship and they may have a very bad relationship, but we, we can just see what posted on Instagram and what's posted on Facebook and what they show us when they present themselves to us but we, we don't really know the level of intimacy, the depth of connection that they're experiencing, then we, we get to feel like there's something wrong with us because we can't just go out and connect to two, three guys on a dating app and then find the one from those two, three guys. So what I'm sharing with you right now is this. If you go at it with a mindset that you're seeking something extraordinary that it's never happened in human history until recently, and that that demands more work, perhaps, on the side of figuring out what's really out there for you and filtering the right guys and also recognizing that the majority of men won't be the right fit for you, then you don't feel overwhelmed. You don't feel sad. You don't feel like things are not working when you go through 50 guys back to back and none of them is the guy that you're looking for. That's You're getting closer to the guy. that So long as you're following the right strategy, which is also a big if, right? If you're following the right strategy, if you're presenting yourself the right way, then you're getting closer to what you want. But if you get disappointed along the way, or you lower your standards, or you imagine that things should be happening faster than they than they are, then you you might experience unnecessary pain. So that's that's my sorry my microphone here. Uh, that that's my my uh, third point here, which is two percent is all you need. Uh, just get get on with that feeling, with that thought, and and move forward in a way that allows you to to not expect something different from that, but to sift which is what this whole video is about sift through the stuff that's not what you're looking for quicker so that you can get closer to what you want faster within a reasonable amount of time um okay next one <laughs> next step is stop looking for your keys under the lamp and here's the analogy i've shared in a video recently if you haven't seen it here it goes and that says if you uh, are if you lost your keys in the parking lot in the darkest place of the parking lot but you find it uncomfortable and rather challenging to look for your keys there because there's no light and because it's kind of like a dodgy parking lot but you find a beautiful lamppost that has strong light maybe 300 feet away and you go to where the light is and you start looking for your keys there because it's comfortable well, it's comfortable to look for the keys there, but you're not going to find them. And I see so many women who are saying, well, I'm looking for the right guy and I want this to happen in a recent amount of time, but here's my, here are my constraints. I have my life. I don't go out much. I don't connect with people that I don't know. I don't go outside my comfort zone, my, my circle or my bubble. I go to work. I uh, order coffee from the drive-thru and don't really engage in conversations with people that are not close. So if, if that's your lifestyle, if your lifestyle is one that is more geared towards comfort and all the power to you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, then you've created a lifestyle that makes it really, really hard to create new connections. You're going to the gym that you feel comfortable in where maybe your girlfriends go or maybe where no one connects with you and has conversations with you, but there's other places out there outside of your comfort zone, other apps online, other, other meetups, other uh, classes where should you take the time and the energy to break outside of your comfort zone and engage in conversation, you can find a lot more of what you're looking for, but it's going to feel somewhat painful and somewhat uncomfortable and somewhat uh, scary to do those things. So principle, again, is stop looking for your keys where the lamppost is because it's comfortable. Start looking for your keys where the keys are, which is outside of your bubble, outside of your comfort zone, outside of where you... Th outside of where you've been moving for the last few months or years if you're not getting what you want uh let me see if any i mean I, I, at some point <laughs> thanks vanessa i appreciate it uh thanks <laughs> maritza i'm gonna ask a little bit uh in a little bit i'm gonna ask to, to for for questions i mean uh, towards the end of this so if you have a question that you'd like to ask uh stay on 
here on the broadcast and uh, I'm going to be answering some questions towards the end. So just keep stay stay with me here. Uh, next step up is and that's where the strategy starts coming into place, which is step number. I think it's number five. Uh, I'm losing track here is figure out what he's looking for early on. Uh, what does that mean? That means that you might like the guy a lot. You might find him very compelling. You might find him very cute. You might find him very sexy. You might find him very confident in himself. And because of that, you, you might be forgetting to ask essential questions. You might be scared of running him away. You might be scared of looking desperate or needy. And because of that, you're not asking the guy what he's looking for. And you're imagining that he wants what you want. And then maybe down the line, once something happens, maybe his physical connection happens and he starts acting weird and disappears and stops calling you or starts ghosting you, then you're like, well, what's happening? Well, what's happening is he never wanted what you want, but you assume that he did. And when that takes place, uh, the most common experience is to get heartbroken or to be disrespected in some way or to be ghosted. So the principle is, Ask the question early on. Uh, and you're not asking the question, do you see yourself marrying me at some point in the future? Do you want do me to have your babies? That's not what you're saying to him. You're saying, hey, just what are you looking for? Well, ultimately, out of this dating game, out of this dating experience, not just with me in general, what, what, what is it that you hope? What's your, what's your vision? What are you looking for? And a few possibilities there. The guy is going to be clear because he, he, he knows what he wants. And he has no time to waste. So he's going to share, here's what I'm looking for. And it might be what you're looking for. It might be something different. But he's going to be upfront, clear, and transparent about it. Second is that he doesn't know what he wants. Or he knows that what he wants is not what you want. So he's going to be shady about it. He's going to say, well, I'm not sure right now. I'm just figuring things out. I just want to take it slow. I don't like labels. Let's not complicate things right now. I, I just don't want to feel any pressure. Whenever a guy responds to that and you're not asking him to say what he wants with you, but he, what he wants in general, that's a sign to run away from that situation and stop wasting your effing time. <laughs> For real. Whenever you find that someone isn't clear about what he wants and you're not in, I mean, a teenager anymore and you really don't have any time to waste even though you want to invest time on the right guys and you don't want to push people beyond uh, where they're at in life, a guy who knows what he wants will let you know about it and will not shy away, will not be scared about it and will actually some, find it somewhat compelling that you know what you're looking for. You're not, as I said, stating specifically with them, but you are saying, hey, I, I'm someone who knows what she's looking for and I want to connect with men, not just one guy, multiple guys who are looking for the same type of vision so we can both see where we're going. So that's the next one. Make sure that early on in the process, you figure out what he wants. And if it's not something similar to what you're looking for, or it's opposite to what you're looking for, stop hurting yourself, regardless of how awesome you think he is. Stop telling yourself he's going to change once he gets to know you, because that's just not true. Okay. Uh, next step up, next um, point here is... Uh, Connect outside the app. And I, and I wrote this one specifically because I feel like sometimes uh, when you, uh, again, find someone compelling, maybe you've gone through, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 guys who don't know how to spell or or don't know how to connect with a woman. And this guy seems to be funny and witty and connected. And then he wants to connect with you on a date. You haven't asked him what he wants. You haven't ever seen him on video, but you say, sure, let's go on a date. I mean, that's a risk you can take if you want, but here is the thing. My strong recommendation is that you ask the guy to connect with you on video for a few reasons. Number one, you want to make sure that the picture, uh, I mean, that just for just general safety's sake, that the guy in the picture and the guy you connect with are the same, right? You also want to make sure that the vibe feels somewhat consistent. Sometimes you connect with someone on video and you get this creepy vibe that is uh, your intuition telling you, I, I, this is not what I'm looking for. And if you don't connect that way or if the guy is maybe overly sexual with you, that he's going to show some of those signs typically on video as well. And if you just go straight into the date, you're going to go on more dates, but you're going to go on worse dates. So create a misstep between engaging with a guy on the app, which is just going to be just to qualify and make sure that you're both kind of on the same page, that it feels okay. Hop to him with him on a video call before you connect with him in person. That's going. Some guys will not want to do that. Guess what? Don't date them. 
if that's it's if they, they can't step into that small step uh, uh, that reduces your risk as a woman and you do have more risks as a woman than him as a man it's just the point of just that's life if he can't understand and be respectful about that then don't be upset just don't date him if he can go through that small step a small hook uh, hoop <laughs> to connect with you you're not doing it to be just to play games you're doing it to make sure that that there's a stronger feel because here's what's going to happen. If you connect with him on video and the guy feels cool, then when you see him in person, you'll be more relaxed. You'll be more happy. You'll feel more excited. If it feels really off, there's some guys that you've gone on dates with that had you done this step, you would have never dated them. And that's going to save you some time. Uh, think, I mean, think about it. You only have a certain number of spots each week for dates. If you have a job and you have children and you have responsibilities, then you don't have too many of those slots. So you want to make sure that you go with the highest quality candidates. I'd rather you not go on any dates on a given week than go on two dates just to go on dates and they both end up being crappy dates because then you start thinking that all the guys out there are crap and that is not good for you. Next step up is uh, let him pursue. Let him pursue. And here's what I mean. I'm not saying let him chase because that's unworthy of any human being. Let him pursue means that you're going to when you connect with a guy, you're going to recognize that there's guys who like to move things forward. There's guys who like to be clear about what they're looking for. There's guys who are hungry for a relationship without being needy. And you want to connect with someone who wants that versus a guy who's expecting for you to ask him out, expecting for you to do what would be rightfully a masculine thing to do. There's nothing wrong if you decide to do it. Most women I've connected with don't necessarily feel super excited about doing that type of work. They feel far more compelled to go on dates with someone who's clear about what they want, who's setting up dates in advance, who's being respectful of their time, who's saying, hey, let's do this, who's inviting them versus waiting to be invited by them. And again, if you ever find that there's a guy that's so amazing that, that you, you want to do that for, then all the power to you. I don't recommend you do it. And here's why. Because a guy who really likes you who is willing to move things forward is going to be a better prospect for you in the dating world than a guy who's passive about it, a guy who is maybe not too responsive, not too interactive, and who, who wants for you to take the lead on that front. Doesn't mean you can't text him, doesn't mean you can't engage with him. It just means that, that you allow him to ask you on dates and allow him to move things forward. You can even be clear about it from the beginning. I mean, if you ever talk to, to guys early on about their preferences and what they like and what they enjoy, you can even ask them, what do you enjoy in dating? And if the guy says, hey, here's what I enjoy in dating. Well, say one of the things you enjoy in dating is when a guy is strong and when a guy knows how to lead and when a guy takes the initiative and when a guy asks the woman out. And if he wants to do that, great. If he doesn't want to do that, that's great too. But you at least give him a chance to the keys to the kingdom, the keys of how to do things if he wants to move things forward with you. Next step up is date him exclusively. And I say this for two reasons. There's going to be guys who expect for you to date him exclusively from the beginning. And that's the wrong move for you. Here's why. Because you're in essence saying, I'm your girlfriend to the dude. And you might not know who he is. He might be married. He might have a, a girlfriend on the side. He might just want a friend with benefits. He, he might be doing shady things uh, or he might be a cool guy, but you really don't know him. And if you say, I'm just going to date you right now, then you're going to have different expectations of him than if you're dating other men. Now, if you have boyfriend type expectations of someone that's not yet proven himself worthy to be your boyfriend, that's a bad proposition for you. That's where it's going to be hard for you to not feel weird when he doesn't call you in three days. Uh, and if that's the only guy you're dating, then, well, then it's going to be weird, right? And But maybe that's the way he does things. And if he does things that way and that's not a style for you, then you shouldn't be exclusive with a dude early on. So, uh, so there's one aspect, which is the guy wanting to be exclusive with you early on. There's the other one, which is you saying, you know what? I've gone through some pain. He's the solution to my, he's the answer to my prayer. So I'm going to go all in right now and connect with him and be exclusive because ah, there's not, no better guys out there right now. When you do that and you don't know him, again, you're putting, you're taking a bigger risk than you need to. And the risk is that you're going to project some fantasies into the future of someone that you don't really know. And when that takes place, it's hard. It's hard because uh, you, you, you can't show, uh, some, you can't grow a friendship when you have those strong expectations of someone 
who hasn't really shown himself, the, I mean, the way he needs to show up uh, to be a boyfriend material. Anyone can show up with a really generous spirit, with a lot of enthusiasm and passion for a week, for a couple of weeks, for three weeks. I mean, the, the longer you go out, the longer out you go, the more likely it is that the honeymoon experience will subside, that the chemicals in his brain that are making him go above and beyond the call of duty will also level up. And then the true self, his true self will show up. And maybe his true self is just as amazing. Maybe his true self is 17 steps below what he's been showing you. And if that's the case, maybe he's not boyfriend material at that level. So if you're dating more than one guy at a time, you're not having sex with any of them, you're not going deep intimately with any of them, but you're getting a chance to connect with them, then you won't show up super needy with any one of them because you know there's more options. Uh, you also will get a chance to gauge where they are. And when the adrenaline wears off, or the brain chemicals that are similar to cocaine in someone's brain at the beginning of a dating a courtship with someone, when they subside, then you will truly see what's left and you will get a chance to see in practice, in reality, who the best match for you is and who you're the best match for without risking and getting your heart broken by going all in on something that you're not really clear on, okay? Last one that I have right now is uh, good sex is waiting for. And here's what I mean. Good sex is waiting for is a principle that says when you connect with someone and there's an emotional connection, there's a spiritual connection, there's a level of friendship and there's sex, that's a pretty amazing experience with someone. When you connect with someone physically that the other things in life, the foundation of the house isn't there, then the likelihood that you can get hooked on him, especially if the sex is good and their chemistry is strong, is very, very high. So when you get hooked on the wrong guy, your life suffers. Because it's not just getting hooked to the wrong guy, is the aftermath of getting heartbroken and the time it's going to take to recuperate and all the missed opportunities in between and all the, the, the loss of self and the, the feeling of rejection and the lack of, I mean, or the, the distraction from your work. There's all these things that take place when you go chemically strong for someone who's not the right fit for you. So if you wait if you ask him to wait, even though he may not be super thrilled about it, there's going to be guys who are going to say, yeah, I, I don't love waiting for this, but I'm willing to wait because I want something long term. Think about it. If a guy is ultimately telling you that he's looking for a lifelong partnership and he can't wait two or three months, three months minimum, let's say, to, to have sex with you until you're exclusive, then maybe he's going at it with the wrong approach. And again, the risk of having sex early for multiple reasons that there's not enough time to discuss right now is heavily more risky on your side than his side. So that's why you might be the one to have to set the boundary early on with him. And if you do, and let's say you, you really wait that time and then you create this friendship with him and you become exclusive and then you have sex with him, then it's going to mean more. Now, the, there's always the risk that you will have sex and the sex sucks and now he's your boyfriend and the sex sucks. But that's a risk that I think is exponentially lower than you had sex early on, it was great, and he's the wrong fit for you, and now you're emotionally connected, you're hooked, you're attached, and it's the wrong dude. And if he's not just a, not the right guy for you, but he's abusive, or he's a narcissist, or he's someone who kind of gets high on putting people down, then you're in for a world of trouble that I, the lesser of two risks is to wait to have sex. Those are my points that I have right now. Hope you took, I mean, I'm going to re repeat them right now to make sure all of you uh, get them, especially if you didn't get them early on. And thanks for all of you who are staying here. I see that there's more people now than when we started. So that's awesome. Uh, step number one is a relationship ma magnifies what is. Uh, it's not going to create what isn't. Uh, if your life isn't great, then it's not going to be great with a relationship. It's just going to suck a little more. Uh, number two, I'm responsible for my own fulfillment. Number three, one plus one equals 10, but half plus half equals pain. Uh, number four, 2% is all you need. And I'm talking about the percentage of guys who are out there who are fit for you. It's all you need. Get with that program because it's uh, if you have higher expectations than that, you're going to experience pain unnecessarily. Number five, stop looking for your keys under the lamp if you didn't drop them there. And that's the whole thing about look for men where men are instead of in their comfortable places. Number six, figure out what he's looking for early on. And if he gets scared by you asking some simple questions, then let him <laughs> let him get lost. Number seven, connect outside the app. Um, do a video call first. 
before before you see them in person, and then that that will eliminate some painful dates. Number eight, let him pursue versus you pursue him. Number nine uh, is date on exclusively, and number ten, good sex is worth waiting for. Before I hop into question and answer, I will. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do something right now, okay? And uh, for those of you who have not yet gone through my free training that's going to take you further than this training right now, I want you right now to hit a browser, go to www.mydatingcure.com. Uh, that's going to be a place where you'll see a little computer with my face inside, enter your name and email, and it's going to send you a free training that can show you how you can attract more conscious men and develop a conscious dating strategy. Uh, so let me go back and uh, as I'm sharing this with you, I want to, you know what, let me just leave this on for a second in case somebody didn't write it down. Okay, I'm going to see, I think I have a first question here. Okay, I'm going to see if I can put this in here. I don't know if I can do this, but anyways, it says, okay, Patricia Waters, what if he's more involved in wanting to fulfill? He's saying he's better in relationship. I'm not sure what uh, what this is referring to. Okay, let me eliminate this thing. Uh, what is more involved in one of and he's better? I mean, if, if you're still here and you can clarify a little bit what you mean by that, I would really appreciate it because, I mean, I, what I'm reading from this is that uh, he's better in relationships that, than out of relationship, then he should be, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure if this means that he wants to be in a relationship early on because he's going to be better in a relationship than just dating. Uh, if that's the case, then, I mean, that's a big risk for you. I mean, don't take him for his word. Make sure that you allow him to still unexclusively date and have him, even if he's not as great as in dating, uh, it should be great enough for you to want to continue seeing him. But don't take the risk early on. I think it's 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 too, too heavy for, for most people to do that. Um, okay, uh, next person up. Do you believe in, let me see if I can post it here so I can, do you believe in destiny, that certain people are destined to be in our lives? If not, what do you believe? Okay, I believe that things happen for a reason, Taylor. I believe that there's a spiritual contract between human beings. Sometimes it's not what we want it to be. I think that a lot of people say, well, this person's showing up in my life and there's a strong feeling of chemistry, so therefore he should be in my life. And maybe the only reason he was in your life is to show you to some self-respect or some self-love, or what not to do, or how to want more for yourself. So although I believe that he, things happen for a reason, I don't get stuck onto, uh, into the false notion that someone showed up in my life and that means that they should continue being in my life. If somebody is showing up in your life in a way that's disrespectful, in a way that is not honoring of you, in a way that's creating more pain than awesomeness, don't tell yourself that the karmic law of connection is holding you strong with him. Maybe it's your addiction to him. Maybe it's your feeling of, I can't get anything else, so he's the best I can get. Uh, I, I, I encourage you or anyone who, who, who thinks about this, this topic such as destiny to think about people show up in your life and, and there's a specific lesson to learn. And if you don't learn the lesson, then you're bound to repeat that mistake again and again. It's like kind of being in kindergarten 50 times instead of graduating to the next grades. So if you find that there's someone, and I, I sense a hinge of pain in how you're asking this, uh, the guy is not able to show up. Don't say, well, I'm going to hold off on other guys because he's the one who's supposed to be in my life. If he's supposed to be in your life, he's going to show up in a way that's respectful and kind and honoring. And if he's not showing up that way, then maybe he shouldn't be in your life and you should just learn a valuable lesson from it. That's my my biggest sense of that. Okay, let me see what other questions I have here. Uh, okay, Deanna, okay, says, if a man messages quickly but doesn't start the conversation, can they still be interested in you early on? I mean, if a man messages quickly, uh, I mean, that's probably... I mean, I, I, I'm guessing you're saying if he replies quickly but doesn't start the conversation, can they still be interested in you? If a guy's interested in you, he's going to start conversations, period, at the end. If a guy's waiting for you constantly to say, hello, here's, uh, where are you, how's life, then uh, he's not as interested in you or maybe somebody else. Uh, I think the whole purpose of connecting via messaging is to take it offline and to get to connect in person. If a guy is... I mean, if a guy is messaging quickly, uh, but is not asking to see you in person, uh, th that's not a great sign. If a guy is not messaging you even on text and not also asking to see you in person, that, that's a doubly bad, bad sign. That, those are my two cents on that one, Deanna. 
Uh, let me see. You're welcome, Taylor. Uh, okay. Okay, you talked about being whole. Okay, he wants... Okay, so, okay, Patricia. So let me co come back to circle this, Patricia, on what you asked earlier. You talked about being whole. He wants a relationship a bit faster than you. My recommendation is if he wants a relationship faster than you, uh, then because you don't know him right now, my guess is if, if you're getting to know him but you don't feel you have enough information yet to date him exclusively, is that you share with him that you really like him so far, that you've liked what you've seen, but you're not yet feeling uh, comfortable enough and that you know him well enough to be exclusive. And there's two possibilities that he's going to say, you know what, if you don't date me exclusively early on, then I'm out. Let him be out. Or the other one is that he says, you know what, I'm going to continue putting in the work and I'll show you that I am great and I'll figure out a way to to, sh to, to make sure that you feel enough confidence in the connection and in the friendship so that the risk is lower on your side and you can agree to this. That, that, those are my sense. If he wants to wait a little longer until you feel clearer about it, great. If he doesn't, then uh, if you feel it's a risk, and especially if you've had previous experiences in the past that make it painful for you, then don't do it. It's, it's, it's a big risk for you. Uh, what about the love? Okay, another question. Uh, Kathy, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Kathy J. Adams, what about the love that overwhelms me and I think about all the time, I think there's something beautiful about love that feels overwhelming in a good way. But when it's feeling overwhelming to the point where you can't think, can't work, can't uh, act rationally, then it may be about the love. It may be about the feeling of a void that is not being filled in your life right now. So I'm not sure in your specific situation, uh, Kathija, what, what this is about. But I think that there's something healthy about balance in love where you connect with someone, you feel connection, you feel even strongly connected, but then you're able to pivot and have a rounded life. And I know what early on is harder than later on sometimes, but if you go all in on that well that makes you feel overwhelmed and you stop losing track of other things that are important in your life, then that relationship will start suffering because you're going to start putting more weight on that relationship and that relationship is allowed or should be able to carry. So you need to find sources of inspiration and sources of connection and sources of intensity in your life that are not connected to him or this person. So that when you do connect with this person, it doesn't feel like such an imbalance between my life is dim and this guy brings all the color and juice in my life. That, that's, a, that's a challenging situation because it generally creates feelings of addiction and uh, heaviness, because you're going to start depending on him. He's going to start feeling soon like maybe he's he's responsible for your happiness, and, and that's not, not a good thing. So shake it off a little bit. Do more things, irrespective of not wanting to do them, that allow you to have a deep sense of awesomeness, not just with him, but without him as well. I'm going to answer a couple more questions here before we go. Um, you have more healing to do? Okay, we all have healing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that we all have a healing to do. Okay, uh, Peg, I'm going to put your question here. And it says, Burn, any ideas about what we in our 60s love your seven virtues to not lose but enhance? I mean, my, my biggest thing is this. I mean, you're, if you're in your 60s, that means that uh, if you live to be 90-something, that's still a gigantic amount of, I mean, that's a big number of years, Peg, that you have ahead of you. So my, my ideas about love in your 60s is that you connect to healthy human beings who are have a lifestyle similar to yours, that you understand that it's not as easy sometimes uh, as connecting to people when you're in your 50s or 40s or 30s or 20s, but that it's still possible. Do not confuse. It's really hard to it's impossible. There's a big step between that and the other one. And uh, depending upon what the specific challenge is, if your challenge is I don't connect with enough men, then you need to put yourself out there in a few other environments. If your if your thing is I'm putting uh, I'm connecting with lots of men, but nothing's happening, then there might be something to be said about the way you're showing up, or the the energy that they're feeling from you, or the level of openness in your heart, or the level of sensuality. Or uh, so I, I would have to get something that's probably more specific to, to give you some better ideas. Generic ideas are this can absolutely happen and it's happening more and more now than before. Uh, but you just have to take a super long approach of this is an ultra marathon and because it's worth having, it's worth going through through the steps of not getting what I want immediately. And not too many farmers. Okay, well, uh, time to get outside the farm area a little bit and, and see what's the next closest city. 
metaphorically speaking or physically speaking, that allows you to to create strong connections. Um, okay. Uh, Annie is saying uh, the way you read the subjects of her questions gives another layer of understanding. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm happy to I'm happy to answer some questions here. You believe it will happen? I, I believe it will happen too, Peg. Uh, uh, time is running short, and I'm going to come back next week to share more about this. I want to thank everyone who actually was here today. Uh, I'm going to go quickly through the roller here from the beginning. Roller Girl, uh, Green Lizard, Leafs in 2022, Taylor, Alice Garza, Patricia Waters, Maritza, Carlos, Vanessa, Funchart, Peg, uh, Diana, and Natalie. <laughs> thank you so much for showing up here. And Katija, of course. Thank you so much for showing up and thank you for your... Um, for your for witnessing and for being here and for those of you who took me up on the opportunity to get the free training of uh, My Dating Cure. Uh, go to that if you haven't so far and we'll connect soon. Thank you so much for your collaboration and your contribution. We're all in this game of life uh, together and uh, we'll connect very, very soon. Have an amazing day and look forward to connecting with you on my next life. Bye-bye.